Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. In this video, we will be talking about uh, energy and powers of a continuous time signal primarily, and we will also be solving and chapter problem 1.3, part A, B, and C. So let's have a very crude example just for those who have difficulty relating energy and power. Just assume two uh, blacksmiths, they are working with the same weight hammer. So we can say that they have same power. But this person after 10 minutes he, got, he gets exhausted. And this person continues for 30 minutes. So we can say he has more energy and this guy has less energy. So how is energy related? Energy can be related as power multiplied by time. So this is 10 minutes less energy, 30 minutes more energy. Okay, we had learned in circuit that the instantaneous power across a resistor is given by Pt is equal to voltage multiplied by current instantaneous. It can also be written as V square over R and it can also be written as I square into R. Now the average power is calculated by taking integral of the power and dividing by the time period. So for a single uh, cycle, the time period is T, so we will uh, integrate from 0 to T and then we will take average of that. Now this PT will become square, so this will become the uh, positive signal, all of it. So let's see. Now, if instead of time one time period, we take a longer time, let's say from starting from time T1 and ending at T2, and we want to find the average power, then what we'll have to do? We have to replace this T with T2 minus T1, and replace the limit from T1 to T2 and uh, the power we can write V square over R or I square into R. Okay, so this was power. Now we just learned that the energy can be related as power multiplied by time. So this was the equation for power and if you multiply it by time T2 over uh, T2 minus T1 then these two will cancel and so the energy. So this is the energy equation we got from uh, um, last slide and now we will convert this into a more general form that is generalized for the continuous time signal the energy E can be written as integral same but instead of V square we will write uh, any generic signal XT so this could be voltage this could be current so xt square dt. So this will become our energy equation for continuous time signal. And for discrete time signal, instead of integral, we use summation sign and the square of the signal again here. The limit is from minus n1 to n2. Okay, so now this was for a limited time period. If we go for infinite time, then our energy signal for continuous time will have now the integral from minus infinity to plus infinity rest remains same and also for the discrete time the limit will be from minus infinity to plus infinity. We have learned that power average is integral divided by the time period uh, so we can now also write the power equation time averaged power over infinite interval will now be limit t tends to infinity 1 over 2t instead of 1 over t we are using 1 over 2t because now our limit is from minus t to plus t and this portion remains same and similarly for the uh, discrete part we divide 1 by 2 plus n plus 1 and the summation of the signal. Now a question might arise that we are dividing here by 2t, why we are using 2n plus 1 in case of a discrete 
the signal. So just to give an idea, let's say we have this signal and you, you can see that N is 1, but here there are three signals. If you put N is equal to 1, it will only be two signals, 2N. Two so to take care of the signal present at T is equal to 0, we add a 1 here. So that is why it is 2N plus 1. Okay, just uh, a point uh, to keep in mind that when your signal is exponential signal, normal exponential signal, and it is a non-periodic signal obviously, then this type of a signal will have finite energy. And when an energy is finite, then divided by infinity, it will give you a zero power. So zero average power. This is for uh, exponential signal. And if we have, uh, okay, and any signal, there is a definition, sometimes it is used, which is called energy signal. So energy signal is that signal whose value of energy is less than infinity. Now we come to the periodic signal. It could be a sinusoidal signal. It could be a complex exponential signal. Both are periodic. Complex exponential, I hope you remember, if we have e power j, then it will become the complex exponential. So uh, the signal can be something like this, going up to infinity. So we can straight away say that its energy is infinite. So energy is infinite, but then power, if this is infinity, this is infinity, then divided, uh, we get some value of p, so we call that as a constant value or constant power. The power signal, the power signal is called uh, when the value of power is between zero and infinity. Okay, now let's come to question number 1.3. Here we have to determine the infinite power and infinite energy for the following six signals. And now from A, B, C are for the con uh, continuous time signals and D, E, F are the discrete time signals. So in this video we will be solving the first three that is for the continuous time and in next video we will be solving the next three that is for the discrete time. So the, this is the formula that we will be following for the continuous time. So first signal, x1t is e raised to the power minus 2t ut. So in this formula, we have to put the magnitude of the signal and square that. So this is the formula. And now here we replace by e raised to the power minus 2t. So e raised to the power minus 2t mod square. And you can see that limit we have changed from 0 to infinity instead of from minus infinity to plus infinity. And this is because this signal is multiplied by ut. And we know that ut has a value 1 only after 0. So from 0 to infinity, this has a value 1. And from minus infinity to 0, this has a value 0. So the whole signal will become 0. But that is why we are keeping it from 0 to plus infinity and the signal and step by step if you follow we're taking the square this one we have taken a square of it we have take, taken integral then we put the two limits so these are the values and we can solve e raised to the power minus infinity can be written as 1 divided by e raised to the power uh, infinity and so this will become 0 because e raised to the power infinity will become infinity. 1 divided by infinity will become 0. So solving, we get the final answer as 1 over 4 joules. So this is the energy signal and power also will just follow this formula. Plugging in the values, taking the integral and putting the uh, limits so this is the value that we get but here you can see that at the denominator 8 t remains and since t is infinity therefore this whole will become 0 and so the answer 
is 0. And we could have also uh, written it directly because we, we know that the uh, energy divided by time is power and energy is fixed because and time is infinite. So something fixed divided by infinite will give an answer 0. And as we discussed that if it is a simple exponential signal, it will have final finite energy which we can see from here and it will have zero power which we can also verify from this answer. The next question, e raised to the power j and this value, so this is a complex exponential signal and uh, if you recall uh, the complex exponential signal can be written in terms of a magnitude and phase angle. So in this case the magnitude is 1, so we'll use that. So this is the magnitude and this is phase angle. This is not less than sign, actually it is, I'm using it for the angle sign. Okay, so now x t, the magnitude of x 2 t is now 1. Now we plug this into the formula. This is the formula. So for et, for xt square, it is 1 square. And that will be taking integral, it will be t, these two limits, putting the limits, the final value will be infinity. So this is for the energy. And now for power, again, we'll use the power formula, putting in the value, and same way, here now the limit is from minus t to 2 and if you solve this it will become 2t. So 2t and 2t gets cancelled and therefore final answer is 1. And so from here we can now see that the complex exponential signals will have constant power. So this is constant power and will have infinite energy. So we got the infinite energy. And finally our signal is x t cos t. This is the formula, so we'll plug in. Plug in this is cos t square. This can be written as cos square t. And we have another formula for cos square t, which is 1 plus cos 2 t or x. Plugging in that value here. separating the two. Now 1 over half integral of 1 over half dx and integral of 1 over half cos 2x. Now this we keep it at it, uh, the we take a half outside and integral will be x putting the limit but this we can safely say that will be equal to 0 because integral of a sinusoidal signal is 0 because positive half and negative half uh, summation of the two will become zero. So our E energy uh, infinite is equal to infinity. And now coming to power, same technique, separating the two. Here also we can directly say that this is zero. So we are left with this one, taking half out integral of 1 dx. So x and the limit is minus t to t and putting the values for one time t and the other time minus t, we'll have uh, t minus minus t which is equal to 2t and now 2t and 2t gets cancelled so what is left is half so the power is half watt so i hope this gives you an understanding how you can solve this type of a problem by following the steps thank you